I just say big vibes. I just say it wrong. I can't. It is a singular vibe. Not multiple vibes. It is one vibe. There's so many vibes, though. One very large vibe. <laughs> just a very, very, very large, <laughs> singular, individual vibe. Fine. Anyways. <laughs> attempting to be spooky because you know we have nothing else halloween themes planned for this episode so (laughs) you know we just got scary opinions and scarier puns i am michelle joined by my co-hosts brianne and kelly and you are listening to the mosh pit or you know to try to be a little in the spirit of things the mosh pit you know like monster and mosh pit so clever (laughs) uh yeah told you guys the puns are scary anyways scary bad very bad (laughs) how are you ladies doing today spooky um surviving Mm. i'm I'm in a little bit of pain it's a it's the same with you every time brianne surviving not thriving i'm old okay my body is failing me (laughs) this is why i don't go in mosh pits anymore it's just because i ache for like days after (laughs) <laughs> the epitome of the scene grandma guys the epitome uh well i hope you out there are having a better day than we are here you know not all achy and whatnot but if you aren't and you're still blue about it the big vibes on today's show are gonna be sweet sugar to you absolutely wicked and you know this is a pun because i'm from jersey and not from new england like my co-hosts and i don't say wicked so that's right <laughs> you guessed it it is Big Vibes Day. We're going to be doing a track-by-track track review of Seaway's newly released Big Vibe. You know we like to switch it up here on the Mosh Pit or Mosh Pit. I'm going to keep saying it, Mosh Pit, even though I kind of like struggle with it. Anyways, but our track-by-tracks <laughs> tracks have been getting <laughs> some traction. So here we are, ready to unleash a bunch of enthusiastic amateur opinions. But if you are sick of hearing us ramble on about vibes and gang vocals and stuff, give us a shout out at the Mosh Pit Pod on Facebook or Instagram and tell us what you want to hear. But unfortunately, for those listeners, we are talking about big vibes today. But first, as always, music news. All right, we've got some new music to share with you today. And to start us out, we've got a new single from our friends in Grayscale. They released a new single called Diamond. And I have some strong opinions about this one because I love Grayscale and I get really excited whenever they release anything new. But I was just not impressed by this song. (laughs) I just, I, first I was confused for like the first two verses and then the chorus hit and then I just got mad I don't know I just thought it it did not Grayscale has so much talent like they just have so much talent and I didn't think it was good for them maybe if it wasn't Grayscale I would like it but because it's Grayscale I don't and I that might be bad of me but that's my opinion well I I agree with you Cal like I was well I partially agree with you. I, I was definitely very confused. Um, and it's definitely um, not pop punk. It's not grayscale. No. It's not even like, you know, grayscale's not pop punk, you know, sound. But no. um, for me, it actually gave me kind of like walk the moon vibes with like a 90s dance build up to the chorus. And then, oh boy, that chorus. Super so weird. weird. Weird as fuck. Um, but you know what it gave me vibes of? Because, you know, we're all about vibes on today's show. Uh, as if that's new. But uh, uh, it's a Will Smith, Welcome to Miami. No? Okay. Yes? Welcome to Miami. It's kind of like that, I don't know, that, like, not rap, but, like, 
well i mean I, whatever anyways um the, the, yeah the, overall the timing of it yeah i guess maybe i don't know but overall just very confused by it i don't think i dislike it um like you said kel maybe if it wasn't grayscale I, it's just very different from like the feel of nella Vida and you know i guess that's okay i was just very unprepared for it i mean when you said walk the moon if walk the moon released this song i'd probably like it yeah and i, I don't know how to like disconnect that in my head but like no, I, I have, won't listen to I have it a song. I, had, I have a song later on i forget which one that i was like if someone else released this i'd like it um but i haven't been like a huge grayscale fan like not even in the way of like i don't listen to them it's just it, they haven't really been my vibe per se um this doesn't change that but i like marginally like this better than the last thing we listened to if i'm rem- remembering correctly but uh, the beginning reminded me a lot of uh, Level of Concern from um, 21 Pilots. Huh. Just like the, the beat of it. Like, dun, 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 <laughs> you know? But once, but again, when you hit the chorus, I agree it was weird. Um, either way, it, was, this... it, it, it wasn't my vibe. I mean, Grayscale in general usually isn't. So this was just another version of not really being my vibe. Brie, remind me, did you did you do a Brie on Doesn't Know for Grayscale? I don't think so. I think they're on the list. Ah, well, that is perhaps why you're feeling this more than other Grayscale. Yeah, maybe. This just, yeah. like, isn't Grayscale. I mean, feeling this, <laughs> but that's the thing, is, like, feeling this, it's not even, like, like, if I heard this, I'd change the channel. Like, neither it, of them are, like, what I'm into. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Like, gotcha. Eh, they both are different sides of the coin. I just, like, I'm not really... They did up. say this is just like a single that they, you know, wanted to release and they were experimenting with, and it's not going to be part of an upcoming album. So that gives me like a little bit of hope That's good. that we're still okay. okay. Okay, they were they were just playing around, you know. They they were yeah, just seeing like what they could quarantine do. Quarantine and like you know experimenting, having fun, just one a dance song. Sure. Yeah. Fine. Okay. We're it good. makes me feel a little better. Yeah. Up next, we have a new song from Jason Lancaster. Uh, his new single, "Say What," "Say I'm What You Want." That's the name of it. Say uh, what you wanna say. Uh, <laughs> I oh, I got some nostalgic feels up in this bitch. His voice is like so distinctive and so amazing that I can't not go back to like mayday like old school like oh god it just gave me so many feels and the gang vocals and the uh, was it second first second chorus there's gang vocals halfway yes through and i fucking loved it yeah no that was it, it's, it's a great song i totally agree with you like uh, you know i loved that little guitar intro and mm-hmm. you know definitely the nostalgia feeling can totally relate because you know even though he wasn't on anywhere but here this song actually took me back to you know, my sophomore year of college when I had an internship at the local news station. So listening to the song, I can... I forgot you worked there. Yeah, so I, you know, listening to it, I could feel myself, like, literally, like, it was like I was transported to these moments. Like, I could feel myself in the biting cold of a New England winter, you know, like when you, you're sitting in the car waiting for it to heat up, because at that time, I was actually borrowing Brianne's car to get there, and Brie had her baby Delilah, and she was an older gal, so, you know. <laughs> My but yeah, 1991 Toyota Camry named after Hey There Delilah Plain White Tea song. Thanks, Ashley. My older sister. <laughs> Yep, there you go. Um, old broad, but she she brought everyone to their internships. You borrowed her, Angie did. My parents are probably gonna hear this and kill me. But, you know, seven years it, removed. No, it is what it is. But yeah, anywhere but here had just been released, and um, it was the only CD that you had in there. So <laughs> I listened to it twice a week for three months. So that album was like one of those sticky memories for me because it was like my first taste of the real world and being a big girl, so to speak. So like, you know, it really like I I have very tangible memories attached to that album, um, you know, and this song brings me back to that feeling, you know. So and I think that's a testament to Jason Lancaster and what he brought to Mayday Parade, you know, that they're still influenced by his style after his departure and you know even long after because you know we're going to talk about the new ep they just released and uh yeah there's you know mayday's still mayday but uh yeah i loved this song and you know he's definitely one of those artists that i think can do no wrong so i'm 
you know, looking forward to I, how many singles has he released? Because his EP is going to be six songs, I think. I don't know. We, I, I'm looking forward to whatever's left that we haven't heard yet. <laughs> Same. I think. I mean, everything he's released so far uh, on his first solo stuff has been so promising. I'm really excited for the rest of the EP. But I thought this song was super sweet. It was it had good lyrics. It's catchy. Gang vocals, like Bree said, like I can't get enough of gang vocals. So I think all in all, it was a, it was just a really nice song and one that I'll definitely like. It's it's one that is easy to go back and listen to, like on repeat for sure. Speaking of nostalgia and listening to bands on repeat, uh, um, the White Tie Affair, a major throwback. Throwback. So their new single came out. Uh, called Seasons. Uh, the last time the White Tie Affair released music was in 2010, You Look Better When I'm Drunk. And their last full album was in 2009, Walk This Way, which that's one of those albums that I can listen to front to back. Um, so good. You know, my first thought was, this is so exciting. Because um, it's been so long since I've listened to the white tie affair and you know so much so that i i needed to go back and listen to some of their stuff for a refresh and you know i i i now that like they've released something new i'm like wow i've actually missed them a lot because you know they were one of the openers at my first scene show um so i have a special place in my heart for them um you know this was the the kind of band that i did that typical teenage girl thing dancing around my bedroom singing oh yeah you have to (laughs) yeah absolutely but, you know, I'm glad I did the refresh and I also danced around my bedroom singing, doing the refresh, because um, uh, this song is definitely not the white tie affair that I remember. Um, I don't dislike it. Uh, I think it's just that the song was supposed to be on their second album 10 years ago, um, and that album was never released. So they were probably at that time trying to start to try different things, you know, after the success of their first album. But I, I don't know if it landed with me. I mean, we'll have to see. But, you know, if they're back, I'm excited, very excited, and I'm excited for new music from them. Yeah, I had literally the same exact reaction when I when I first saw this. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. The White Tie Affair is back. Like, I'm back in my, like, middle school bedroom, like, dancing. Right. And that's uh, that's, like, literally exactly what I thought. But um, I just, I didn't like it. I don't know. I thought it was so cheesy. Like, I feel like I if I was, like, in high school writing a song in a notebook about, like, falling in love or something, this would be what I would write. I don't know. I just thought it was a little bit cheesy. Um, but I, I think it might have been that I hyped myself up a little too much. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe you would have liked it if it had been released 10 years ago. I I probably, because I would have been in high school and, like, (laughs) or where was I 10 years ago? I don't remember. 2010, you were in high school. I was younger. I probably would have been like, ooh, fall, fall, fall in love, rain, 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 go away. I would have probably loved that. (laughs) So, um, the reason, the the way I found out about this and put it in the doc was because, um, randomly it popped up on my Facebook because, like, back in the day, I, like, liked them. And I was like, first of all, Facebook algorithm, how the fuck did this pop up? <laughs> all, um, the, the, um, Chris Wallace, the lead singer, kind of posted a video a couple, like I want to say a month or two ago, being like, have I made the biggest mistake of my life? And it was like this whole explainer about like, this is the third time he's, you know, trying to get his music going. And like the first time he had a shitty manager and he got like $40,000 in debt. And then the second time he did a solo career and he fucked it up again. And then he actually had a really successful career up until this point of writing songs for other people. And then when his wife went into labor, he quit his job (laughs) and decided to give his music career one more shot. So he also released um, uh, some solo, a solo project. I don't, I think it's only one song at the moment, which I haven't listened to to be fair. Um, but that that whole video was um, the video popped in my newsfeed. I'm like, well, why is he posting this on the White Tie Affairs page? So I click on the page. The first video on their timeline is the two guys from mm. the, the band being like, "Do you want to do that again?" And they're like, "New song coming out on Friday." And I like shit my pants. But <laughs> the, reason why, the reason why I'm giving you all this background is because I feel like this is a song he wrote for someone else. 
I feel like this is a song he wrote for like Charlie Puth or some other top 40 person who could have taken this and done it better and it would have been a better success. I feel like this is, I don't know, I feel like this is him trying to make a hit rather than speaking from like his soul like a good artist would like i feel like he's still in too much in the mindset of a songwriter not so much a performer if that makes sense the way it's written i feel like it's not it doesn't seem like it would be something they would record it seems like something that you know some top 40 you know no name dude because you know how like charlie puth sean mendez and there's another one that i can never tell the difference between any of their voices and they all sound yeah like, this sounds like song for, made for them, not for a band like this. It just, mm-hmm. it, like, it just, there's a cognitive dissonance there knowing that he wrote songs for so long afterwards for other people that, like, I feel like somewhere in there they should have just given that away and done something more, you know, a white tie affair-esque rather than, you know, I don't know. I I feel like it was an, it was an okay song, but I feel like if it was a top 40 art- artist doing it, it would have been better. Yeah, well, I I think it's going to be interesting to see what actually is the White Tie Affair-esque now, right? Because they only released one album, and we all know that bands evolve from that, and especially, you know, with 10 years in between a previous album. uh, I don't know what we're going to get when it comes to new music from the White Tie Affair. Um, So, yeah, it's going to be fun. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So, last episode, we teased some new songs that were coming out, and um, now that they're finally out, we actually got to listen to them. So, Yay! one of the ones, <laughs> I know, one of the ones that we mentioned last episode um, was a new single from Bones called "Send in the Machines," and um, we pretty much like preemptively said we liked it because we pretty much like anything that Alex de Leon sings. <laughs> so we preemptively said we liked it and um, that opinion holds true, at least for me. Um, I am not really sure like what genre he is anymore, but this is just like generally a really good song. His voice is so good that like essentially whatever kind of track it's on to me it just sounds amazing but he also got really experimental and like there are a lot of sounds and you know stuff going on in the background <laughs> on this one that I'm not used there to but as all his his songs just get me real fired up but I don't know how to deal with it I don't know <laughs> he's so good sounds is a technical term right right Kel? yeah a very scientific, <laughs> I would say yeah <laughs> well Cal I mean if we stick by what we say here genres aren't real so alex is simultaneously pop punk and not pop punk he is schrodinger's genre um but no you're you're totally right cal like his voice you know he's got so much power and you know he he makes me ready to rage you know like i i heard the song and like i felt like you know the testosterone kick in and like i was like about to roid out go into battle and fight everything you know (laughs) (laughs) I fucking no, but I loved really? it. Yeah, I really no, I loved it. It, it. You know, it gave me um a little bit of Fall Out Boy, a little bit of Skrillex with that undeniable Alex De Leon flair that he brought to the cab. And I think you know he just makes everything work. Like I don't know how he does it, but he's like a magician, a musical mm-hmm. magician. Well, that's that's kind of how I thought about it. Like I've always been a fan of like the pop version of like techno. So like you know like Skrillex and you know, the. Um, all those DJs and whatnot, but it's very hard to bring that kind of a vibe to a pop punk song and do it well. This was it. This was 100% it. I was fucking rocking out to it. I loved everything about it. Just the breakdowns in the middle, like, oh, it gave me life. Like, I wanted to just, like, go and headbang, but I was eating dinner, so I would probably would have choked. <laughs> Real life. Real life. So good. I just need more. Yeah, just uh, enough with the singles. I mean, actually, no, keep the singles coming, but like, I just need more. I just want a Bones album. Yeah. And we're ready for the Cab album, too. Oh, yeah, that, too. Can't forget. Can't forget. We won't let them forget. (laughs) Can't break a promise. Uh, Speaking of uh, albums, uh, we've got from last week, we talked about uh, the Mayday Parade's new EP that came out. 
Uh, it's only three songs, so it's a, just a little guy. But uh, <laughs> a little guy. What you guys think? Just a little guy. Uh, what you guys think of it overall? We had already talked about the second song on the album, "Light It Up," right? right yeah. That's the one that came out already. Yeah. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. um, you know, I'll stick with what I said last week, last episode about it. Um, you know, it's typical Mayday Parade sad boy vibes, and I think that's kind of how I felt about all of it you know like i can only hope i thought it was typical mayday for me um the guitar solo you know like about two minutes in it was that was just absolutely oh my god the best part and you know it just really punched up the second part of that song for me up until then it was just kind of like you know mayday parade cruise control um and i had was whatever but i at that point i tuned in and then you know the first song the the drums and the guitar at the beginning were great I thought it was newfound glory and then you know i was like oh well it's then it's just you know typical mayday things like you know the way derek holds his notes and the emo vibes it's a great song and whatnot but uh yeah i I don't know i i I really liked all of it but it was just regular old mayday and i think they need to switch it up on me a bit even if i end up hating it because it's uh getting a little stale maybe oh see i was totally 100 percent in for it like i I honestly thought Lighten Up Kid was the worst song on the out of the three of them. Um, first, the first song, the opening riff, and then the drop to another beat. It's the exact same thing they did with Champagnes for Celebrating. And it just, like, brought me back to, like, that kind of a vibe. And the lyrics also are reference trains from, like, you know. It was, it, I just found a lot of parallels between the songs. I, I, I was really into it. Um, I also thought that um, I can only hope the beginning of it how it's like slow and somber like that's the mayday that i love because also every song i compare to is uh miserable at best that's like always the song that for me is like quintessential like sad boy mayday so any kind Mm -hmm. of slow song even from other bands i kind of compare to that so Mm -hmm. this gave me enough of those vibes where i was like all right if if, I'm, i'm here for it i really liked it I actually really liked First Train because of the guitar and drums. Like, I thought they were, the guitar and drums in that in that first one were, like, way different than what I remember from Mayday. But I also, like, don't listen to them religiously anymore. So I'm not an expert, but that's what I remember. Um, but I did, I liked the first one. Um, I can only hope the, I mean, Derek's voice, like, lends itself really well to that like acoustic type part at the beginning and and things like that but Michelle I agree with you I feel like um I have to like be in a certain mood to listen to Mayday like I can't just turn on Mayday all the time like I I just don't do it um I have to like be in a certain emo state (laughs) to like turn on Mayday I don't know and I don't know if that's a me thing or like other people feel that way too, but I like can't. They're like a band I can't really listen to every day. Not that their music isn't good. It's just like the mood. I have to be in that state. It's, mo- it's mood music, hundred percent. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. especially because I think you know at this point we've uh, you know Mayday Parade just has that connotation of just like really sad, like I mean yeah. like feels kind of music, and so like even if you might feel like listening to it, your brain's like, no, you don't. You don't need that right now. <laughs> but sometimes you need that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what I need more of? Uh, meet me at the altar. And uh, we yeah. will get more of them because they are signed to Fueled by Ramen. Oh I'm so God. excited. Though, this is like a huge deal, guys. You know, um, back in, I think it was episode nine when we had Crystal McRae of scenes from the underground on the show uh you know we talked about a little bit of how uh racism and a lack of representation affect the scene and um you know i think meet me at the altar is uh just like the epitome of what we need to make these changes you know having uh, a band signed to one of the bigger labels in the scene um a band of women and women of color and it's fantastic and i I, i'm so excited for them and it's going to be fantastic and i can't wait to see what they do 
um, now that they are signed by Fueled. And um, I mean, now we know that we, we know they're going on tour next year. Hopefully it'll stick uh, with Hot Mulligan. So I'm definitely buying a ticket for that. Same. I'm very excited for that. I'm recently started to listen to Hot Mulligan too, so I'm Ditto. I'm pumped for for both those bands to tour, and also touring in general. But you know, yes, that's 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 a separate issue that we don't have know. to go there. <laughs> no, because it hurts. <laughs> well, speaking of concerts and their lack thereof, uh, the closest thing we can get to concerts nowadays are nowadays are live streams. Segue. Um, and All Time Low had their first live stream of their uh, five concert series that they are doing um, every other Friday. Um, this one was the front to back playing of Wake Up Sunshine. And it was a little weird because it wasn't actually a live stream. It was basically a pre-recorded video that they then stream like released at the time. I don't know. Yeah. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like they were playing live. They did a pre-recorded thing where they did a lot of editing and transitions and all this kind of stuff. And they had interviews in between, which, I mean, it was cool, but I wish they had done, like, Michelle and I were texting about it, and uh, it was it was just weird. Um, I, I mean, I really liked it. Um, it was great to see the songs live. I was rocking out by myself on my iPad, jumping up and down on my bed, listening to it. So, I mean, yeah. I had my own little mosh pit by myself, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean... I, I'm excited to have anything at this point, but yeah, the, the fact that it was like a pre-recorded live stream, if that it, that's just contradictory, but uh, that's an oxymoron, right? There. It, it was a little, uh, you know, a bit of a bummer, I guess, because um, it didn't give you, it didn't lend to that 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 concert atmosphere, you know, because like especially all time low, and you know they they like to fuck around on stage and make jokes, and you we got a little bit of that, but I think with the pre-recorded kind of vibe, it was like just like you know we're playing the songs for you and um you know i i i I still enjoyed it because like like you brie like i put myself in concert mode i like hooked up my laptop to my tv and i was like jumping around my room and like dancing and singing and i was really stoked on it but uh it kind of threw me especially because it you know it, it was the editing was like bothering me there were sync issues and you know the it was flipping back and forth between different aspect ratios and it was hurting my brain um like as someone who's worked in in video production like that's just it just hurt my brain like i get they were kind of going for a stylistic thing but it didn't work for me at least that's my personal feelings on it and it just threw me see the aspect ratio didn't bother me but the fucking sync did like the amount of times that you would see Alex's lips move and the lyrics didn't match up or especially the over there's there was one camera which was a cool angle but they just fucked it up where um it was above Ryan looking down at the drums and so you could like see what he was doing and there were so many times where he would hit and nothing would hit <laughs> in the audience <laughs> and it's just like I don't I don't know who what happened if it was like someone was I'm wondering if they live cut it, you know what I mean? Like they were live switching or if like while they were recording or if they went back in post and tried to edit it. Cause if it was yeah. live switching, then that's a whole huge problem about how the shit that ended up not being synced. But if they did it in post, then it makes a little bit more sense where one track gets off and then it just fucks everything else up but down the line. So yeah, I don't but know I mean, they did this in July. They had plenty of time to get it right. So Oh, that's when they, I didn't even know that's when they recorded it. That's when they recorded it. Yeah, at the beginning of the show, it, like, there was, like, an intro oh, card, right. and it said recorded, pre-recorded in Nashville. So when they were, like, doing stuff in Nashville together. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a terrible fan, and I didn't watch it. But I'm actually not a terrible fan, because I bought all five tickets knowing that I probably wouldn't be able to go to all of them. So I'm actually a really great fan. I just, like, didn't watch it. <laughs> well, that was why I was so – because I remember them posting about how they were like, oh, some of you can't watch it when it's released at 6, but there's, like, a replay for 48 hours afterwards. But I actually watched mine, like, Saturday at, like, noon. Like, I was, like, eating lunch and, like, rocking out in my room kind of a thing. But, uh, yeah, it was – I mean, you didn't really miss that much. I mean, it was – I didn't was do nice that either. Live, but, but. <laughs> but I did watch them on GMA. Ooh. Ooh, which you one up on me because I did not. Oh, yeah. Um, it was cool. I mean, it was really cool to like see them on GMA. Um, I mean, obviously not live. They were there via Zoom, but 
Um, just really cool that our boys were on GMA. Yeah, and big they, deal. I know. And they had like a teeny mini interview before like two or three questions or something. Um, and I feel like you could tell that they were a little bit nervous. They were like trying to be their their normal selves, but like Jack was like, I don't know, like you could tell something was like they were maybe a little nervous or something. Well, um, yeah, it's a bit like especially because you know they're I'm, they're not crude, but you know they 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 you know they make dick jokes, they're and, to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to be like professional. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah, but I thought that was cute. And then they did um, they performed monsters, but it was pre recorded. So it was like a, it felt, kind of felt like a music video performance. Type yeah, it was really thing. cool. Like, that was really produced. cool, though. It was cool, yeah. But they um didn't do the black bear part, so the, they didn't do the rap. So that I was, was super kind of pissed upsetting. about that. Yeah, super pissed. Yeah, normally pretty upsetting. When people when normally, well, let's put it this way: if it's a full GMA concert, when they're outside on the plaza with all the crazy people they'll do the full song but if they're just doing like a one song performance usually they don't let them do the full song anyway so i'm not surprised that that's the part of the song that got cut but at the same time i Mm. definitely because i watched it like this afternoon like right before we started recording and it was cool but at the same time i'm not surprised they didn't also they had fucking sync issues on that one too (laughs) brianna are you sure it's not just your like internet it's just like messing up with your your no, because I pay all watch... time low, hire Brian. I... That's actually what I'm trying to get at is that they should hire <laughs> someone who knows what they're doing. I'm free. <laughs> I will quit my job and move wherever the fuck you want me to if I can work for all time low. Shit, I don't know. I just it, I noticed a couple little times. Also, I kept every time he said ruin my life instead of fuck up my life. I'm just like, what? Uh, oh right, that's they can't say fuck on TV. Yeah, in the because uh, uh, too bad, really. They, yeah. Like I said, they play it on my my radio station that I listen to all the time, and um, they play obviously the clean version where it says "ruin my life." And every time I'm singing, I'm like, "Fuck, ruin, fuck." <laughs> I can't, I struggle with it too. See, we don't really listen. Well, I don't have a good alternative radio station here, and uh, the the only time we're in the car and we listen to stuff, Slate always has his YouTube on, and we've gotten into a habit of just having the same songs like automatically play after another which is like sleeping in monsters then it goes down a black bear rabbit hole for a little bit then it turns into post malone and then it just (laughs) evolves back around to pop punk it's really weird but it works that's interesting yeah i mean the only reason i'm listening to so much radio is because I get lazy sometimes and I don't feel like putting my Spotify on when I get in the car. I, it's just easier to like put on that radio station and listen to like things that I enjoy. Like when you listen to the Mayday Parade CD in my car for two days a week for a month when there was an entire CD uh, CD box in my glove compartment. Well, you never told me that. <laughs> <laughs> the entire time I had no idea you listened to that every day. I'm like, I had like two all-time low CDs a random bullet for my valentine's cd and then like a bunch of mega mix cds you would have nope. you've got a good laugh out of those i was listening to anywhere but here twice a week for three months in 2011 <laughs> weren't we all <laughs> that does it for music news <laughs> yes that is it for music news and we are going to move on to our track by track review of big vibe by seaway <laughs> All right, we are feeling some big vibes here on Mosh Pit. Um, Canadian pop punk band Seaway has released their fourth studio album, Big Vibe, on Pure Noise Records. Following their 2015 release, Colorblind, and 2017's Vacation, Seaway was ready to evolve and introduce a new era to their fans this year with Big Vibe. They said that Big Vibe is the record that they've been working towards for their entire careers. And for this record, they threw away the usual conventions of the scene and genre and just made the record they've always wanted to make. And we're all about that here at the Mosh Pit. We don't believe in genres. We just believe in good music. So big vibes. Those are big vibes. We believe in (laughs) vibes here. Um, by the way, saying big vibes, every time I, I want to say this album name, I want to say vibes, but it's just big vibe. It's one vibe. And not, I do. Not multiple vibes. I just say vibes. big vibes. I just say it wrong. 
I can't. Okay. All right. Well, it's a singular vibe. It is one vibe. There's individual so vibes, though. <laughs> Just a very, very, very large <laughs> singular individual vibe. Anyways, fine. Um, <laughs> the first song on the album, a "Brain in a Jar," uh, <laughs> is fantastic. It sets the tone for the song and the rest of the album because um, that opening riff is lively as fuck. Mm-hmm. And it is very CUA to me, even though the music's a little bit more alt rocky versus like straight up pop punk. And, you know, I feel like I would dance to this at the big beach luau blowout, you know, at the crux of a high school teen romance movie. Like, you know, in the chorus where it does like the <laughs> do do do's and the ahs and everything. Like, I would totally do like the whole dance move where you're like your hands like doing like the wave forward. You know what I'm talking it's about? Called, like, it's, it's called the swim. Is that what it's called? Yeah, the swim. I didn't know that's what it was called. Okay, well, for all you listeners out there, maybe I'll post a um, video of myself doing the swim so you know what the swim is because I didn't know what the swim was. What does this remind me of? It's like um, in Lizzie McGuire, the Lizzie McGuire movie, that song. Um, Hey Now? Hey Now. um, Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride? No. Oh, my God. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. it's Something uh, about a roller coaster. Yeah, Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride. It's also in Lilo and Stitch. It's in a bunch of movies. Yeah. Yeah. That it's one. A roller coaster ride. Anyways, um, I totally dug it. It was a great start to the album. Uh, big vibes. <laughs> I'm gonna say that at the end of every song. Is that now I got big vibes. A ranking thing. It's just big vibes. <laughs> oh, is it, is that a rank? This one gave me medium vibes. <laughs> I'm just no, it actually gave me a big vibe. I thought I just really, really love the drum intro on this one. It kind of felt like anthemic a little bit. Um, For sure. And so I, I like didn't like it the first time around and I, I was like not that into it. And then I listened to it a couple more times and I loved it. So like, I don't know what it was the first time I listened to it. I can't really. You just weren't prepared. You weren't ready. But I, yeah, I guess I just wasn't ready. I don't, maybe I was expecting something different or like, uh, I don't know, but. It's a, uh, yeah, definitely gave me uh, larger vibes if I had to rank my vibe level. Um, I also had a big vibe with this one. Um, I, I could not stop staying in my head. I could not stop bopping around. It was super fucking catchy. Um, this, this definitely seems to be about, uh, like, alcoholic people but uh, this is part of the song that can be related to uh, a lot of different people um the i don't need to know where it's headed i can just let it go and forget just forget it or i fucked that up a little bit but you get the point yeah um (laughs) it like makes it seem like the whole song is about like someone getting drunk because they got rejected like oh what is this? And they're like, oh, it's not like that. It's like, oh, just kidding. It's fine. We're just, you know, going <laughs> just with kidding. It. Well, because you know how there's like those relationships where you're like, well, what are we? And one person always thinks it's more than the other person. Yeah. I feel like this is from the point of view of the person who thought it was more. And they're like, no, it's, I didn't mean it that way. No, we're good. Like, it's the awkward, like, I'm going to go get shit canned because I don't know what to say now. Yeah. So that like, that like line, I feel like it's very you know, all-encompassing of, I mean, a lot of people can relate to that. So I, I, I dug it. All right. So um, we're not going to change the rating system on our listeners now. So what do you, what do you guys think it is? That's a banger. I said jam. So um, there's some complicated math in my um, oh, rating because oh. it's a banger because it had major like rock vibes, but it's a bop because of where it took my imagination, which is like super uh-huh. wholesome so naturally the math worked out to a jam for me so it's a jam okay so it's a jam yes two jams okay. and a banger it's a jam yes <laughs> okay one day someone's gonna so fix our, our system for us it makes so I much sense i don't i don't agree with that math mish because i thought i thought that banger and or uh, banger and uh, brian you do this every time you do it every time every the time banger and the bobs are on the same level and a jam is lower than those two no like, jam not. is above it every time you do this i don't agree with that then i think a jam is overall a good song and then it diverts based on what kind of vibe it has no you're doing an upside down pyramid here it's a, it's a regular old pyramid I don't like it. I don't like that ranking. I don't like that because I put <laughs> banger and bops above a jam. 
jam, I think, is just like, it's a solid song. Those two have, like, emotion behind it, and a jam does not. So I don't agree with this ranking system. Ooh. Yeah, see? I'll make a fucking good point. That was a good point, but, I mean, we'll, we'll discuss. <laughs> we'll leave it as is for this moment. <laughs> I just want my protest to be recorded and, like, documented so that way, when, not if, when we change this fucker, I was right. <laughs> Very heated right now. Okay, Priya. Can't wait for you to come up with another another word. Can't wait. <laughs> well, speaking of our new ranking system, Big Five is the second song <laughs> of the album. Apparently, we, got, we added that to the fucking system. Uh, okay. So Big Five was a single that we had already talked about, and I just remember that I wasn't super into it, and I'm now going back and listening to it in, like, the context of an album, and not watching those (sighs) drug fever dream of the music videos. Like, all of the music videos that they have released, which is how I've been listening to their songs, have been so fucking weird that I feel like it tainted me against the music, because I really liked this one. Like... His, the grit in his voice, like, the, the rasp was so great. Um, I loved the guitar, the intense guitar riff right before the second chorus. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I could say anything super negative about this song. I thought it was great. I just want to maybe apologize for being tainted by the visual when <laughs> I should be paying just attention to the audio. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. I think it's super catchy. It, this one gets stuck in my head really easily. Like, I'll just, like, be going about my day and just it pops in my head. Um, and it has some, like, cool little elements in the background. Maybe, I, maybe a synth or something that they're something electro-pop-esque. Yeah, definitely the new stuff there. they're trying out. Stuff in this yeah. Yeah, which I like. I thought I thought this one was really cool. And I, I think it's a good, um, like, title track song. It, like, kind of encompasses the um vibe if you will of the album (laughs) using some very uh pointed words here this is a very meta track by track (laughs) since we use the word vibe all the time (laughs) um yeah i i agree like you know it definitely put me in the big big vibe mode um i didn't dislike it before but listening it to this time around in the album i liked it instantly especially coming off of brain in a jar and, you know, the, the bridge was a great lead into that final, like, power chorus. And um, I was just really digging it. Like, a, a, you know, I, I was talking about this, like, high school teen movie in the last one. And, you know, I, I think I'm going to write a teen movie based on this album. Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> despite me saying it was, like, country themed when we talked about this song last. Um, this song now. Oh, yeah, this one. I you said that. Yeah, now it put me in, like, a car cruising Oceanside, like, picture the Pacific Coast Highway on this spontaneous adventure with my crush, who I never thought would give me the time of day, but here we are. So, that you know, this is where I'm at. (laughs) Oh, my God. You need to write a novel or something. (laughs) Like a teen romance novel. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to. (laughs) Okay. What is it? A jam? Jam. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Track number three is Mrs. David. Such a I really like this song. Um, the chorus is just super cool, really upbeat and catchy. I this is one of the ones that like the chorus was like a perfect payoff to like the mid tempo verses. Like it was just like kind of mid tempo. And then the chorus, like, just hits ya. It just gives me, like, Stacy's mom feelings. But I, uh... God damn oh. you, Kelly. That's the one I'm note sorry. I have about this song. Okay, well, like, not my fault. We all have the same brain, okay? Like, <laughs> um, but I did, um... So this album was actually supposed to get released, I think, in August. Um, but it got pushed back due to the pandemic likely i think lockdown pushed it back um but mrs david was not on the album when they planned to originally release it so um they so since the release date got pushed back they were able to go back into the studio and add this song and um 
I think fun fact that worked out really well because I think this song added a lot to to the album for sure. Oh yeah, I I, to- I totally agree. It's a great song. It's super fun. It's got like you know that pop rock vibe a little, like um, you know the starting line or the click five, and um, yeah, <clears throat> it really had. Ooh, yeah it had those instrumentals bad. in the chorus that could easily be on radio and you know i totally agree with you kelly like um that for me i didn't say stacy's mom i said it's like some mrs robinson shit mm-hmm. like i like even with the lyrics i um uh, <laughs> like you know we took a trip down the coast and you asked and you know we could get away now we could get away far with the top rolling down like um see like i knew this whole album was set in a coastal scenario and it's like you know (laughs) that's exactly what i said you know cruising in a car the big vibe but you know now in the story it's not the crush and the girl it's you know it's it's the crush meeting the girl's mom and then things get wild and you know the story goes haywire here both of you live inside my brain because literally the I mean, I had another note about how the vibes is very 80s, and I was picturing, like, The Breakfast Club or some shit when I was listening to this. However, the only note that I wrote about the overall song was, this is the new, our generation, or this generation, Stacy's mom, or slash Mrs. Robinson. Literally, that's, <laughs> that's all true. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not mad about it, but then I also go, I'm going to think about it this way, rather than he's cheating on someone, like, there's an adultery <laughs> song, rather than, like, a, I'm gonna hook up with a mom song. So that's that's where my brain went. So I'm just like, I don't want to think about this in a more negative way. I mean, it's still an adultery song technically, but either way. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's just, I'm just, we'll just, I, we'll my, stick with the I, first I, the idea. The wind was just taken out of my sails because I was so excited to, like, throw that Stacey's mom comment and then fucking Kelly. All right. <laughs> fucking Kelly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I don't I don't make good analogies with uh, other bands. Normally, I'm like, it sounds like something, but I can't think of what it is. <laughs> But this time I finally had, like, a go-to, like, it sounds like this. And, meh. Anyways, uh, I called it a jam. I also called it a jam. I said bop, but okay. So it's a jam. Okay. All right. Uh, Fourth song, Still Blue. Uh, This was also a single. This is another song that I thought was really fucking weird because the music video was crazy. But I actually ended up really liking it, again, in the context of the album. I just really need to stop watching music videos. I think I'm, because I edit for a living, that I'm too critical of the visual and I kind of ignore the audio. It, it reminded me of, like, old school Blink, where, like, they go really aggressive at the game and they drop for the chorus. I would love to see this live. I can just picture myself, like, in the back of a crowd, like, dancing by myself, like, having a grand old time. You're always um, in the back of the crowd, Brie. <laughs> Maybe I'm just desperate for human contact. I don't really know. Either way, I just, I really like the song. Yeah. Um. So, you know, it, it's funny that you said, like, the music video, like, was a, a hindrance to you. Because, uh, you know, I, I literally, like, this, this song and I, what everything's been happening I, I can't help it like my imagination just took me places because you know I'm still with this whole movie narrative like you know because oh because now this song is where everything blows up because you know the girl finds out about the affair of the crush and the mom and you know he's lamenting losing her and you know he's seeing her and all their friends get excited about like you know last football games and prom and senior year stuff and he's missing out um, and so he wants to stay in this moment where he was happy, but he fucked it up. And, you know, even though his friends are moving on now and, you know, that, that's where I'm at. And I mean, I know I'm kind of like stretching it to really make my movie fit the album, but like, I kid you not, I'm going to write this movie. <laughs> Very detailed. But as for the song, like I, I liked it definitely more in the context of the album versus as a single. It was it was definitely a great song um, and it's it's definitely keeping the momentum, I think, up for the album as we start to head into the the middle section i um i like the whoa the woes and the claps and the chorus i Mm, thought that was fun to me like the verses were a little bit monotone i don't know this one didn't get i didn't like as much as some of the other ones i don't know can't really put my finger on it but i don't know shrug emoji from kelly yeah oh yeah i realized we're doing a podcast you can't see me (laughs) <laughs> I'm doing shrug emoji. I don't know. It's just like, I, I can't really put my finger on it, but I like just wasn't very excited about this one. So like, it's you... fine. I, I recognize that it's a decent song. It's just but it wasn't for, for you. Me. Yeah. So what was, so what'd you rate it? Meh. It's a jam for me. Uh, I had it as, I think it's jam. Yeah, it's a jam. All right. Four jams in a row, guys. Add some peanut butter. I'm hungry. Sorry. 
<laughs> Four jams in a row. That's wild. And the next song is Wild Things. Oh. <laughs> Segway. Yes. Uh, so I liked the song. You know, it had this like interesting kind of synthy vibe, but you know, and then it had some like kind of acoustic element, and it was really cool. But you know, I don't know. I I, I wish it was like a little more. Like, you know, like at, at, uh, at the end of the chorus where it goes the wild things, wild things coming over me, um, it has a cool little ba ba with the drums mm-hmm. that, you know, it felt like everything was going to just drop out, then come back in for one more line or two of the chorus with like twice the power, but it didn't do that. And I was like really upset about it. So, you know, you know, kind of like in, in big vibe, it did that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I liked it. You know, it was a little The Main meets Paradise Fears with some boy band love song. Oh my god, Paradise Fears. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, right? Sorry, I haven't heard of that in a while. But yeah, um, I, I, I loved it. I, I, I loved it, but I wanted more. Yeah, I agree. I thought this one felt a little more like poppy or even like dancey a little bit. And... I don't, and the chorus was interesting. I, I agree though. Like, I feel like it fell a little bit short for me, but I, I liked it. Um, I actually really, really like the song. I didn't feel, uh, the missing elements you guys did. Um, maybe it was because I was listening to the lyrics too much. Um, it just, it spoke to me, uh, on, on a couple levels because of like. Cause you're a wild oh. thing. Cause you're a wild thing. I was going to say, you beat me to it. <laughs> no. Damn it. <laughs> Because the lyrics are talking about, like, the actual, I mean, they talk about, like, people get older and they get jaded and they grow apart and it sucks. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that whole thing. And especially because we're, like, into the part of our lives where college isn't keeping people together anymore. Like, our physical uh, proximity isn't, you know, it's, it's, that's the easiest way to keep friends. Now, you have to work for the friendships. Yeah. And people get older, and they get pissed off about stupid shit, and then you know, it, it just you just grow apart, and it sucks. So that's uh, that I feel like that's a good chunk of what the song's about. So I, I just kind of hit a little different. Yeah, um, I feel that. I I also liked that it was like a nice break because I feel like all of the songs have been like pushing it to like nine or ten every single song, and this one kind of was like a nice little like you know like a six and a seven, a nice little break, kind of a pause. Because there yeah. isn't really a full slow song on this album, and I feel like this is this one and then um, Sick Puppy are probably the closest we get to a slow song. So mm-hmm. it was nice to have like a mid song, a mid uh, album, like kind of like release. You know, like you can take a breather. Well, see, I I I, I disagree, obviously, because I, I wanted more out of it, and because I'm just like, no energy, let's go. Ha! <laughs> You're the kid who your parents definitely like didn't give you sugar as a kid. I'm guessing they didn't. <laughs> very good move <laughs> well you guys remember what what i was like when the few times i would have like energy drinks in college i was I off I the walls i stayed up all fucking night with you in that editing suite i remember i was like <laughs> angrily editing half asleep and you're just like ah let's play and i'm like you need to edit and you're like i can't sit still and i'm like i can't deal with you right now <laughs> Anywho, what are we ranking it, guys? Bop. Bop. Oh, bop. Oh, bop. Hey, bop, sweet. Bop, 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 bop to the top. Every time. It, it just, it just comes to. out when naturally. You, whenever you have three bops, you have to have to do it. Oh, okay. That's that's the rule? <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what you're referencing. High School Musical, Brianne. We've been through this. Oh, okay. I, I remember talking <laughs> about High School Musical, but I couldn't remember the reference, and now I do. Also. Yes. You don't have to mm. shame me, Michelle. Jesus. I wasn't shaming you. I was just saying. God. God. Go on. Anyways. Is it pretty pathetic right. that I was shaming you? <laughs> that was so oh, bad. That was so bad. Gotcha. You. <laughs> no, I was, it, was, it would have been to me. That was a burn. That was a self burn. Oh, that was. I was being pathetic, pathetic for shaming you. <laughs> no, okay, we're done with that. It's All right. Speaking bad. of number six here, pathetic. Uh, um okay yeah track six pathetic probably might be my favorite oh might be my favorite Ooh, you don't like it at all i don't know i I thought so i'm gonna go last this one so this one i um so one of my favorite things about 
Seaway's vocalist is like when he does that like yell thing and like you can tell mm-hmm. he's getting super passionate. I love that and he did a lot of that in this song. Yeah. Um so that made me like it a lot. Um and I thought it was like kind of a little more on the emo punky side, but the like pop punk melody and and pop punk guitar and drums like I think really tied it together for me. I just I really like this one. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you said it's a little bit more punky because for me it's like the m- most pop punk song I felt in the album so mm-hmm. far. Like I felt like yeah. the rest of the album was a little bit more pop rock like alt- or alt yeah. rock. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know I I really enjoyed it. Like and just FYI, I will spare you guys, but it could totally still fit into my movie narrative. Just saying. Oh my god. Um, god. but yeah, no, I, I I enjoyed it. It was a great song. I wouldn't call it my favorite, but I definitely enjoyed it. And um question for you Brie how'd you feel about the let's go I feel like you might still have some sour feelings towards like talking in songs after our last episode (laughs) I honestly don't even know what you're talking about so I guess I just like tuned out after a certain point because I don't know it's at the beginning it goes let's go (laughs) oh see here's the thing that kind of a like a small little thing at the beginning that's one thing but because it was throughout the entire album last time I just kept noticing it more and more and it had nothing to do with the song like that one I forget which song it was but the one that said this song is called and then it started the song that yeah. I didn't mind if that was the only time it happened it was the fact that it was just like the entire album I <laughs> anyways you guys can go listen to the album to hear me rant about all the fucking talking that is on MGK's new album which anyways <laughs> um so this song I'm very very torn about and I'm gonna get a little uh vulnerable I guess um so as a, like, the music and the, the, like, the whole thing I really liked. However, actually, no, before I do the however, uh, one little side note that I found hysterical, the, the line about getting your, my haircut to fit in with your King Street friends is really funny because in Jacksonville, King Street is where all, like, the ratchet bars are. <laughs> so it just, I just made me laugh a little bit. Anyways, but, uh, however, um, I love... I love, I like the song, I love the genre, and I understand that, um, the reason why we identified it with when we were kids, well, when we were teenagers, was because it was, you know, emo, and no one understood us, and, like, that kind of a vibe, but, like, being removed from that, and growing up, and kind of realizing that it wasn't just a phase, and that I had a lot of work to do on myself, seeing lyrics like this kind of makes me worried that there are certain songs that cross a line, about like when I talked about like the uh, imagery of the suicides in previous songs that we've covered and whatever and like the the line I'm so pathetic that I don't deserve the skin I'm in like it just really it really makes me worried for what my teenage self would have been like with this song like I could see taking those lyrics to heart and just being even more of a dark spiral rather than using it as a way to pull myself out of one so i do love this song but i do worry about some songs going a little too far in the like emo my life sucks kind of a way and that's to be fair that's also me working on myself for you know the past 10 years to 15 years and realizing that it wasn't just a phase a lot of people it is just a phase but i just you know sometimes there are certain songs that just hit me differently Sorry to bring down the vibe. No, for sure. No, it it makes complete sense because, I mean, I think with a lot of these songs in the scene, you know, we've talked about it, you know, it's a dead horse that we're beating that, you know, mental health is a huge thing. And um, I think and being like an outcast and um, there's one of two ways that someone will take something like this. They'll relate to it and be like, I'm not alone and feel better or they'll be like, yeah, this is me. Or and in the case of this song, like, I am pathetic. I don't deserve the skin I'm in. And send them on a spiral. You know, it's kind of one way or the other. And, um, you know, it, I think it just, it, it comes down to the support that you get in the scene. And the and the, mm-hmm. the impact that a lot of these bands do. Because, you know, aside from, like, obviously the sexual assault allegations that are rampant. Um, uh I think most bands and, you know, ultimately it is a lot of dudes, most band dudes, they're really chill. They're, you know, they're there to listen to you. They're, they're like, you know, 
down to earth guys and they're they, they they're there for their fans they genuinely care about their fans and so I, I i think it ultimately like comes down to having that support system in the scene aside just from the music no i was just gonna say like i think um like any kind of art like it's up to interpretation and i i think for me what you said michelle like really resonated i'm it, you know, like when I'm in a dark place, I need to hear stuff like this to like help me not feel alone and help me feel like, you know, someone else has gone through this and like they've, you know, seen the other side of it or like, you know, just, I don't know. I've, I feel like music has always like been that for me to like, you know, have a, a, I don't know something something to sing along to that helps something to hold on to stuff yeah um but I do think there's a line that just yeah it's it's I think it's more the fact that I just know how I like this is very personal to me I'm not trying to you know blanket it but I just I just know that like me as an adult yeah that I, I agree letting out your emotions is way better like but teenager me I was always so like just I'm not telling people mm-hmm how I feel I'm not doing all this stuff plus the other thing is too is that like most of my really tight-knit friends were way more into like pop music or whatever and it was like I didn't have like I had a couple they sucked. Of friends but we weren't like super close like it wasn't those, those weren't the friends yeah. that I was gonna tell that I was having troubles with so when you were talking about support within the scene talking mm-hmm. to the bands yes I agree but like you also kind of need to have like those people like if, if my concert friends were like my close friends I feel like it would have been a little bit easier to be like the song you know blah 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 but if I ever tried to tell yeah. like my close-knit friends who were like the pop side they would just be like this song's stupid why are you listening to it you know what I mean I, yeah I totally got that because I I, mm-hmm. I experienced that always because you guys are my friend my concert friends and you guys live across the country and it sucks <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. so it's a jam for me I said jam too. I had it as a jam. Lots of jam. So jammy. <laughs> well, you know what's in jams? What? Sweet sugar. sugar. Ah! <laughs> 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 Moving on to something a little bit less uh, depressing. Um, so I really like Sweet Sugar. Um, this is such a relatable song. Um, it's the, you know you shouldn't be doing something, but it's so irresistible. You, like, just can't stop yourself. Michelle, I can just hear it in my head that this parlays into your movie theme. Um, <laughs> um, Shocker. Obviously, this one is, uh, obviously, this song is clearly talking about a girl, but you can easily take that mindset of, like, I shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z, but I can't stop myself. You can apply it to a relationship. You can apply it to a friendship. You can apply it to, I don't know whatever you know eating you can apply it to drinking you can put you know it just it applies to a lot and i i really liked it so for me it's funny because uh i felt like the opposite like uh and again so this this shows you how much like music is up for interpretation because like yeah obviously like you said it has that guy girl kind of uh dynamic but for me it it was a song that I feel like didn't go deep enough where I could relate it to something else. It was just your typical guy singing about a girl and it really didn't do much for me, you know, which is again, why I'm excited for a band like meet me at the altar to be signed to fueled because hopefully we can start getting more songs from like a female perspective, something that we can relate to a little bit more instead of putting ourselves in the shoes of a guy, you know, wanting a girl and you know like songs like garden which was about friendship and you know um if you haven't listened to our episode where we highlight meet me at the altar and some other lesser known bands go check out episode 11 if you don't know now you know masha um but uh back to the song i uh i'm actually hearing a little bit of the main here again and um I'm, I'm definitely feeling a lot of that influence, which I don't even know if, you know, that it's kind of seeped in there. Uh, but uh, the second chorus here it gave me that, like, kind of drop and power that I, I wanted in Wild Things. And, um, you know, I, I dig it, but it didn't really do anything crazy for me just because I, I couldn't relate to it, I guess. Yeah, I thought I didn't really read into the lyrics very much on this one, but, like, musically, I thought it was just, like, a nice poppy kind of groovy melody i guess it was i mean it was catchy and like 
the there was a pretty nice guitar riff um for the bridge like i like that um but yeah i i would agree i don't know that this one like went soared above the others for me but i thought it was a good like poppy poppy pop punk song if that makes sense yeah it makes sense so it's a meh for me meh uh, that was a bop. our first meh our first meh all right on to track number eight peach um that also goes good with jam and sugar it sure does <laughs> The first thing I have to say about this song is the whistle is very fun and it makes me wish that I could whistle because yes. I feel like that would be very fun for me, but I cannot whistle. Um, but it's still, I still like it. Um, I like the chorus in this one a lot. And for, I, um, you know how we like always try to like something will remind us of another song or another band or something. And we'll like, be, we'll say like, oh, it reminds me of something, but I don't know what. I like sat there and listened to the song like maybe three or four times trying to figure out what it reminded me of. Um, and like stylistically, it reminds me a little bit of um, Four Year Strong's new uh, Ooh, new album. Yeah. The um, uh, So the album was Brain Pain, but the um, so I think the song was Get Out of My Head, um, especially the whole like screws coming loose um, yeah. part of the song, like that kind of brought it together for me but like i don't know like musically too it kind of gave me those vibes yeah i think it's probably because for it, it had a little bit more of that rock vibe again here and you know mm-hmm. four years strong's a little heavier um and uh I, yeah, I really also enjoyed that whistling i think it added like this cool little level to it and you know then how uh you know the the dope guitar solos it had and everything it was great i i really enjoyed it and you know i wasn't just vibing with the music but the lyrics on this one actually like after coming off of sweet sugar which i didn't relate to at all this one i related to hard like you know um and i i think you know i'm i'm like exaggerating but i think seaway is my new all-time low where it like is like describing me and my life and everything um because like that first line hit me like a pile of bricks just like my late 20s um you know and then like kelly said the the part about a couple of screws coming loose and you know because you've got a heart of stone and i i think i've had enough of petty love and you know i've mentioned before that i'm in a happy healthy relationship but before he came along oh jeez my love life was in shambles and not just my late 20s but all my 20s they were a roller coaster you know between awful dates and clingy guys and guys i clung to and you know the occasional ex just popping in to say hello because you know whatever they like to ruin my day <laughs> um but and be like hey hey remember how you were almost over me or you were like 99.9 percent over me i'm still here exactly I dude do that shit but yeah, it's so, but it was so relatable, you know, and like, boy, did I, you know, I didn't want any of that petty love and my heart was made of stone. And, you know, it's just, I think a super relatable song that, you know, anybody can jam out to particular us old millennials. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I really related to the song. Like you said, the lyrics were just spot on. And I think that even if it's not in a romantic way, you can easily apply this to a lot of different relationships. Like it's just toxic. Like, it's, you can reply to a bad friendship or whatever, and it's, it's, it's kind of goes back to what I was talking about with, um, the other song about, like, you know, the toxic bullshit in relationships and whatnot, is that, like, you're trying to distance yourself, but maybe not, like, fully, like, if you want to grow up, I'm here, kind of a thing. Like, I, I kind of took this as more of, like, a friendship song, where I've had a couple friends, a couple people in my life who have been kind of a dick once I left Massachusetts and it's like I still want to be your friend but I'm not gonna put any more effort in this if you're not going to so when you want to exactly I'm here but I'm not gonna do this anymore yeah you don't want to put in the effort when you're the only one doing it and yeah exactly so I liked it um Mishka how'd you rate it uh jam Kel jam 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 peach jam <laughs> Kelly, you're Yummy. so cute. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just pictured her like eyes turning into the peach emojis. 
or or like the cute little big anime like oh look at me peach jam i'm so excited (laughs) you know kelly if you would let me i would pinch your cheeks because you're so cute speaking of which if you let me is the next the next (laughs) oh man Uh, Uh, we try so hard we try so hard (laughs) so um if you let me song number nine on the album um so this song uh it was where i personally felt like i this i kept relating them to the main and this album i think is 100 percent one that i think the main could put out you know like mm-hmm. you know the switch up in the music as it goes into that first chorus and the ooh in the chorus you know is very the main to me and uh you know i keep comparing them but at the same time i feel like Way has its own stamp And I don't know if it's, uh, you know, um, the voice or just the upbeat, feel-good energy that they always bring. But they definitely, I think, are forging their own sound. And I've got to say, I think this one's probably my favorite song off the album. Yeah, I I like this one a lot. I think um, the lyrics were pretty good, too, which I think, I mean, it was like a little bit of a slower, slower song. So it made me I think listen to the lyrics a little bit more than I had been maybe throughout the rest of the album but um I like like these lyrics a lot um I like your mind is a soundtrack it's always singing the blues oh I loved that line that one hit me I like that um but yeah I thought overall it was a pretty good song don't give me that face Brian I didn't dislike it (laughs) but I didn't like so the do do do's and like whatever it kind of gave me a beachy vacation vibe like I'd have this on my beach playlist when I'm sitting out in the sun. I don't know. I mean, it was fine. It, it didn't really give me anything to write home about. Um, I was kind of like I did literally like I so I break down my notes into like the sound, the lyrics, and like my overall feel. I had nothing written as the overall feel because I was just like, eh. It was just there. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now i arranged it a meh because it wasn't bad but it didn't do anything for me hmm. it was bop for me i said jam so jam so uh <laughs> jam. yes because jam is below a bop and a banger <laughs> no because it's above it no it, yeah it's if above we're it doing one from each level i'm at meh so it should bring it down then to a bop if you're no because right. a bop is a jam All bops are jams, but not all jams are bops. Exactly. Thank you, Kelly. You're welcome. Your ranking makes no goddamn sense. (laughs) I'm actually starting to get angry. Kelly Kelly understands it completely. I'm actually starting to get really angry about this. You're wrong. It should be a jam. It shouldn't be a jam. It should be, yeah. Nah. Excuse me, Brianne. We are presenting a unified front as the mosh pit. I... Are you about to secede from the mosh pit? This is the hill I'm going to die on, you guys. Like, this is fucking stupid. (laughs) I might. No, fuck you. I can't succeed from the mosh pit. I created the mosh pit, damn it. (laughs) I'm going to kick you Um, We're actually the monster pit, so. It's the monster pit. Okay, well, whatever. (laughs) We're that. You guys are going to have the monster pit. All right, uh, whatever. Bri, I'll give you a tabop, whatever. (laughs) I don't give a shit. It's it's a good song. I hate you guys. You guys suck. Love you too. (laughs) Mwah, mwah, mwah. Kisses. You're wicked cool. Speaking of which, uh, the song that spoke to my soul before I even listened to it, uh, (laughs) the 10th song on the album is Wicked, My Inner Mass Hole Was a Happy Human Being. Wicked. Um, Wicked. So it was wicked good. Um, Blech. (laughs) um the tempo changes throughout the song were really cool like it was like steady up front and then it speeds up and then drops back out and then you know it was all over the place which i kind of kept you on your toes i was a fan of um his the the rasp in his fucking voice is just so like i just chef's kicks um (laughs) they've had uh the breakdown right before i think it's the last chorus was really really good they've had a lot of really great guitar work throughout this entire album um that was just a little snippet that stuck out to me and um 
<laughs> it's a shit week or the the chorus is it's a shit wicked world and we're sick of it me with like three weeks until the election like i just want to <laughs> the 2020 Absolutely. in general big 2020 vibes from that <laughs> the song has big 2020 vibes i have big vibes i see what you did there that's, that's <laughs> the vibes wicked wicked 2020 vibes just you know, yeah all over the place um so this song for me is just see way through and through like it, it but it has that like the nice little rock edge like this could be lula on the beach in the verses mm-hmm. but then it's so rock and i love it like it's beyond pop punk and especially like that guitar solo at the end is just ugh, hard eyes <laughs> agree i think this one yeah this one in particular is like super seaway but like a little more mature than than old yeah. seaway because it has more elements i think to it than um than some of their past albums but um yeah i think overall the the lyrics of this one just really got me as like this is this is our year (laughs) this is it um, especially making sure this couch is working fine very much identify (laughs) very Very true and this also this one had was like the only song that had a long ish outro yeah which like i don't really think it needed that like it was a really good song it was like really punchy and i don't really think it needed no i loved it outro you did i'm not usually a fan of outros anyway so like that might be a me thing so what'd you rate it uh banger 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 oh Oh. the first banger of the album interesting accent i don't know it it felt right old british lady it felt right at I the didn't time. know if you were trying to go spooky on us again. Uh, maybe a little spooky. Ooh. So spooky. So That's spooky. Scary. It's You know what's spooky is that time has flown by and we're already at the end. For Sick Puppy. Aww. The final track. Um, the final countdown. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> so Sick Puppy number 11 last song on the album um this one was a little bit slower to start but then the chorus punches it back up um we were talking about ryan's vocals and how we love like when he yells and gets like passionate i thought i thought that was really great in the choruses the but i love it like his voice saying that was just like really spot on um other than that, I don't have, like, a whole lot to say about this one. I don't know. I was hoping for a little little more, I guess, for the closing track, but that's just me. Well, see, for me, I think it was the perfect way to end the album because, I, I don't know, I think it, it really encompassed the album vibe of big vibe to me like uh i don't know i think they outline it perfectly in that last verse like you know these friends of friends remind us of the where and when wouldn't mind if they forgot my name what a trip we're living in you know all these stories Mm -hmm. that they mentioned that happened to a friend of a friend you know are a reminder of all the you know cuckoo banana shit that happens to us in life you know but we're a sick puppy that loves it because you know we often look back and laugh at all our life experiences and learn from it and i don't know maybe i'm looking too deep into that but that's a big vibe for me and you know it's you know just another song that's seaway's big vibe and i i really enjoyed it i don't know i mean i liked it because like, again i didn't write anything down other than like oh it's, i like the the music itself was good but like it was nothing like all that crazy like at first, when I thought, like, at the beginning, when it was, like, a slowed down, like, tempo, um, I was kind of like, oh, we're going to get a slow song out of this. And the second it picked up, I was like, oh, okay, just kidding. I don't know. I mean, it was okay. It was, it was, it was fine. Well, I liked it. I thought it was cool. And, you know, Kelly, you mentioned, like, the oohs um, for another song. I think they really nailed them and added them in well throughout this album. Like, like peppered in the mm-hmm, oohs like and, and, and the wah wah wahs and the ahs. And the doo-doo-doos. And the doo-doo-doos. And the na-na-nas. And the whoa whoa <laughs> Yeah, all of those. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got them all. Um, so, it, it was a jam for me. I ended on a meh. I ended on a meh. You guys suck. Okay. <laughs> Hard jams, got it. Cool. 
So for me, I thought it was an overall great album. You know, I think they've managed to stay true to who Seaway is, or at least, you know, what I think of when I think of Seaway, um, you know, with that high energy, feel good vibes, you know, while they were still able to explore a lot of new sounds and I think nailing them, you know, um, I think if they stay on this track, I'm excited to see what they come up with. You know, the more comfortable they get with like with experimenting with new sounds and uh, new genres and everything. So I'm going to give it a B plus. Yeah. So I thought overall it was a good album. Also, I think um, it. I agree with Michelle. It feels like all the best parts of Seaway, but they but it's not the same as their past couple albums like it still feels different and feels like they tried some new things and matured a little bit um there's definitely some songs on here that are getting added to my rotating playlist definitely Ditto. brain in a jar mrs david pathetic big vibe peach like a lot of them are, are getting added to my to my rotation um i think in general it was like pretty pop punk with some you know some other elements and other um influences peppered in there so i think i think i would probably say a b plus also i was like between a b and a b plus but i i think i'll give it the the extra plus um as someone who's never really listened to seaway before um i went into this with like no expectations no preconceived notions and I really like this album, like, a lot. Like, more than I thought I was going to, just because when listening to the singles, I had such, like, a negative taste in my mouth because of those stupid fucking music videos. Um, <laughs> sorry, Seaway, I understand the art behind it, but it gave me just, like, epileptic shock. Um, so I would say that, uh, but purely on a music standpoint, especially, like, in the context of the album, like, there's plenty of songs that I don't know if I would necessarily listen to like an add to a playlist but there's definitely like front to back this album worked like that is always a huge thing for me is that if if uh like that's kind of why i got so mad with mgk's album last week is because the flow kind of got fucked up with all the talking like there wasn't a build a release and then another build and you know what i mean like i feel like albums yeah. have like a flow to them versus mgk's was like oh 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 and then, like, a, just, like, falling off a goddamn cliff, and then it went, like, crazy all over the place, and then went back up to being good. It was just weird. Versus this one, it was constantly good throughout. There was some kind of, like, little blips, but nothing crazy, where I was just like, oh, I didn't like that at all. Um, so, yeah, I would give it a B plus as well. Oh, wow. Ooh. So it's a B plus. We don't have to calculate. That's exciting. I already had my calculator out and everything, but it's just a B plus, guys. Hooray. Good job, Seaway. Solid score from the mosh pit. Because, you know, our opinion so important. <laughs> but uh, we hope you enjoyed that. We had a great time listening to this, obviously, since we scored it so highly. But that's all we've got for you guys. Uh, don't forget to follow us at the mosh pit pod on Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, to keep with the spoopy vibes. Um <laughs> share your uh, halloween costumes with us are you gonna dress up as a band you know actually um two years ago with the wonder years did their like semi-annual halloween extravaganza uh, uh here in jersey i don't i don't know if they did multiple dates for that but uh they dressed up as uh queen and it was awesome uh th this year they're doing it again and they're they're doing like uh like a blink set like splitting the band in two and doing like uh the travis mark and tom show or whatever it was mm -hmm. um and uh it, it, i'm excited for that but anyways uh i digress uh show us your costumes because halloween spoopy woo! <laughs> again that's at the mosh pit pod on facebook and instagram we love you guys let us know what other things you want to hear from us in the meantime Hashtag Mosh on. <laughs>